The racial disparities are continuing. There is a 5% reduction in the likelihood that a black woman will develop breast cancer compared to a white woman, but there is a 38% increased risk that a black woman will die of that cancer compared to a white woman. And overall, we're seeing these rates um, of uh, incidents slowly uh, climbing. Um, so th there's a lot that we need to do. And luckily, there's a lot that we can do. And most importantly, that people can do for themselves. Yes, um, I'm delighted that the American Medical Association is speaking up for reducing the risk of this uh, form of cancer. It's the most common cancer in women and also occurs in men. Uh, but there are four steps highlighted in the new policy. And the AMA is encouraging educational efforts and also encouraging doctors to talk with their patients about four things. A plant-based diet, regular exercise, minimizing alcohol or avoiding it completely, and also maintaining a healthy body weight. Now, regarding the last of these, I might mention that a plant-based diet helps improve body weight. So those two sort of go hand in hand. But altogether, uh, these all are uh, a powerful combination to reduce the likelihood of developing breast cancer. There is also considerable evidence that these same steps may reduce mortality after cancer has been diagnosed. That's important. When it, it, every woman, and frankly, every person, is concerned about the risk of developing cancer. And if we have thought, well, all I can do is wait till I have it and try to detect it. Yes, uh, the, detection is important. Treatment is, is vitally important as well. But if we can reduce the risk that the cancer will ever occur in the first place, that gives us power um, that we haven't had before. And the reason this is particularly important is the word hasn't gotten out there. We did a poll of more than 2,000 women in late 2024. And we asked women, what steps can you take to reduce the risk of getting cancer? And only 28% uh, only 28% cited anything related to diet. Uh, they were more likely to say, well, get a mammogram or see your doctor. Well, those find the cancer, but those don't reduce the likelihood of getting it. So we need to get the word out about things that actually will reduce the likelihood that cancer will develop. Well, these four are really important. And I have to say that each one has a bit of nuance. For example, when we say a plant-based diet, what are we saying? We're saying vegetables and fruits are good. That's true. But one of the big um, areas where women need some education, and frankly, the overall public, including doctors, need some education, is about soy. Soy products like soy milk or tofu reduce the risk of developing cancer. That's important information because years ago, people thought the opposite. They thought that soy isoflavones might actually increase breast cancer risk. Well, the studies showed the opposite. They showed that a woman who consumes a substantial amount of soy can reduce her risk of developing cancer by about 30%. The same may be true of men. And so the, the good news is that if we get this word out, uh, women can put it to work tomorrow morning when they splash soy milk instead of cow's milk on their cornflakes. We are seeing uh, research continuing to come in. We have two important studies that now have suggested that cow's milk may increase the risk. And that is perhaps because cow's milk contains estradiol. Estradiol is the principal female sex hormone in the blood of women prior to menopause. It's also in cows. When cows make milk, estradiol gets into the milk. And if you eat a slice of cheese, you're getting some of that estradiol. So that may be the explanation. So a woman who avoids cow's milk products and dairy in general, but uses soy, avoids the problems of dairy milk and takes advantage of the benefits of the soy products. Soy is optional, but it seems to be, seems to be beneficial. Regarding alcohol, um, there has been sort of a back and forth. Is alcohol a little bit good? Is it a little bit bad? And the uh, bottom line is, is 
while we like to wear our party hats, I have to say that alcohol increases the risk of several forms of cancer, not just breast cancer, also colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and many others. I want to mention that up until fairly recently, many doctors felt, well, I don't have the time or even the expertise to talk with patients about diet. Um, I don't get reimbursed for it. Our office sessions might be only 15 minutes long. That's not really enough time. Well, I understand that. But in the same way that an orthopedic surgeon doesn't have to do the physical therapy, you refer to a physical therapist for that. An internist or a surgeon or an OBGYN doesn't have to become a nutrition and lifestyle coach. That's what registered dietitians are for. So you refer the patient to a registered dietitian could say, what are you eating now? Which vegan foods can we bring in there? How can we make your diet more plant-based? Uh, do you, How often do you eat at restaurants? Let's really see if we can get this together. And when people do that, the benefits can be huge. I might also mention that the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which I also work with, started a campaign called Let's Beat Breast Cancer. And it follows the same four steps that the AMA is, is spearheading, helping women to get away from alcohol, to exercise, to follow a healthy plant-based diet, and to maintain their weight. And I'm hoping that when people put this to work, that families will have more power, less fear, that families will stay together longer.